Hello and welcome to That Pella Show. Dan here. Mick here. Simon here. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. As if we haven't been hanging around with enough awesome guitar players already this week, um, we're delighted to welcome back Simon Jarrett of Kingsley Amplifiers and Pedals. Uh, regular, so regular viewers of the show will know that Simon's been on a couple times already and we mention him regularly for lots of reasons. Yep. And we take every opportunity we can to get you on the show just to hear you play. Because <laughs> I pay you a lot of money. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> no, just Simon doesn't pay us any money, right, just to make that very clear. Pays us in drugs. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Simon, lives in, Simon lives in Canada, so um, every time he's over, we do try and hook up. So we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. How are you doing, Simon? How's it been? Excellent. Great, yeah. Just overseeing the folks. It's been nearly three years since we've been over. Yeah, right. What with everything, and uh, so it's great to be over and see the family and come and hang out with you guys. Wonderful. Really enjoyed the show the other day. I was so you. lucky to just I didn't know the show was happening when we booked our trip, but it just oh, so, right. so happened I heard you guys talking about it on uh, one of your uh, episodes, uh, the, the questions one, and you mentioned you could be in Frome on such and such a date, Frome, and I went, I think we're there then. So that was just awesome. We got to come and see you play and get got to see and meet Andy Timmons, which was just mind blowing. Isn't he amazing? So yeah, just. Fantastic. Yeah, 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 couldn't be better. We're filming with him this afternoon, so it's going to be a pretty big day for me and Dan. It's going to be a, <laughs> a pride-swallowing siege. Um, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff we want to talk about. So one of the, the conversations that's unfolded, actually thanks to Simon in no small way, is um, all of us are familiar with guitar amps. Take guitar, plug in the front, make loud noise, everything's great. One of the things that Dan and I were chiefly interested in a little while back, and I think me especially, was separating out the preamp and power amp of your amp using external pre's, valve pre's, and running into either the effects loop return of your regular guitar combo, or indeed using a power amp in the way that I've been doing recently. And if you've watched any recent episodes of TPS, you might have seen a vlog or two where I'm going down this path of exploring that way of doing things the benefits of which I guess we can recap a little bit in this video. What then happens is every time we talk about it, we do get quite a lot of questions asking, well, how do I know it's a preamp? How do I know it's an overdrive pedal? So we'll get into a mm. bit of that today. Yeah. So I've just got a couple of new things that are super interesting, which we'll, we'll have a look at. And then I think just chew the fat over what's going all on. All the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, all the stuff. We Even just as we were setting up today, um, talking about maybe what we would talk about, there was things coming out that was like, oh my God, little revelatory yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk about phase inverters, yep. sure. one watt power amps, all kinds of things. So um, yeah, that's that's where we are. Let's, let's kick off with the juggler though. So one of the very first pedals I ever bought from you was mm. the, the AC big green you had the juggler. Original juggler. The original version juggler. Version one. Yeah. Version yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I used that for a long time. Fantastic thing. So. Where are we up to now? Version three. Version three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, version one. Well, first of all, the juggler uh, was always based on the uh, the Dumble ODS style of preamp. Right. Okay. But in the version one, what I did is I basically uh, built a version of that preamp, but it was designed more to go into the front of an amp. Okay. So its output was attenuated. Right. And the EQ was tailored a bit for front of amp use. Okay. So it was while I called it a preamp. That was back in the earlier days of making them. It it's uh, not the same as the current versions of the Juggler and say the Maiden, which are preamps which are designed actually to hit a power amp directly. Right. right? So right. The, the the version one wouldn't be so good for that. It'd okay. be rather dark and low output. Right. Yeah. So anyway, it's progressed along a, a lot since then. Sorry, Mick. Yeah. No, no worries. Part of the context of of what Simon's just talking about is this is um, the Artisan and the Juggler. Aside, this is my actual rig that we were using for the dates we've just done with Andy Timmons. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, using the valve pre's to drive a, uh, a a straight power amp. So Simon mentioned a couple of things there. The Maiden, mm -hmm. which is uh, a preamp that you do in a couple of different um, formats. That's what I use as kind of my stage one as if you were just plugging straight into the amp, that's the first gain stage. And then on top of that, add another valve preamp to create the overdrive in the Dumble style that, we, that yeah. you were just talking about. So the juggler essentially sticks it all in one box. Yeah, basically the juggler is like having a Maiden D and then a Page DS 
all-in-one enclosure plus some extra features which make it more friendly for running front of amp right. Uh, right. or even for running into a power amp like there's a global master which facilitates say if you're going to run into a hot log, hot rod deluxe which is the power amp's wide open you know sure. so now you can attenuate it on here we will do that so you'll get to hear the crazy stereo wet dry rig but then we will plug it into a hot rod deluxe because that was one of the first ways that we came across all this stuff mm, was yeah. One of the benefits that we talked about was, you know, let's take the Hot Rod Deluxe as a, as a good example. Much loved amp on stages everywhere across the mm -hmm. world, often supplied as backline, ubiquitous, and loads of people really love it. However, if it's slightly not to your liking, I don't want to use the term stuck with it because it's a bit pejorative. I'm actually really happy when I find one. But if you want something different, you can bypass the front end of that amp completely, plug into the effects loop return with something like this and radically change the amp. So yeah. we we will do that. And plus I see in the juggler. Yeah. Remember so this? <laughs> the EQ lift, yeah, yeah. So this was a thing that you could add on to the Maiden D that would yeah, it would lift the EQ out of the circuit, and what that does is it frees up a lot of gain, uh, yes, and gives and, and take, because it takes the treble, middle, and bass out of the circuit instead of a kind of scoopy sound, it, it flattens that out, so right. you get more mids and a louder tone. So it, it's an effective way to get a boost, basically. Okay. Awesome. Before we have the preamp or overdrive pedal discussion, then let's can we have a walk through and yeah, for sure. I can get my head around uh, yeah where we are with All stuff. Right. Yeah. So basically. Uh, as on the Maiden, we have a volume, treble, middle, and bass. Yeah. And then you have a three-way bright switch. So all that's the same as on the Maiden. Right? Yeah. And this is first, right? Is yeah. It? So yeah. the preamp, the way the way a Dumble ODS uh, circuit architecture works is your guitar hits uh, a clean preamp first. Okay. Okay. Which is two gain stages with an EQ section in between those, those right. two gain stages. That's the clean channel of, of uh, your traditional classic Dumble ODS style amplifier. I suppose it's basically an evolution of, say, a Blackface Fender style okay. preamp. Yeah. yeah. So the Dumble architecture is such that that preamp, that, that's your clean channel. And then when you step on the overdrive channel, it introduces another 12AX7 valve after the clean channel. Right. Not before. Okay. So right. your clean channel hits another valve and you can set how hard it hits that second valve. Oh, right. And that gives you your overdrive tone. So it's it's mainly the overdrive is all coming from V2 and in, especially from the second half V2B of that tube. That's where all the overdrive is mostly happening. Uh, and uh, For anyone who doesn't know, a 12X7 style uh, valve is a, a dual triode, right? It's a dual it, triode. It has two Thank stages you. Yes, in it each does. one. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So you, by that time you've got four Amplification stages. Four stages, got. yeah. I mean, if you have if you have a typical 12x7 and you hit a single stage, you'll get a big volume boost, but no breakup whatsoever. Right. If you allow that second stage to cascade, that first stage, excuse me, to cascade into a second stage, you can get some mild breakup, and that's what the page is, right? For example, right. the page okay. level, right? Just two stages cascaded, Amazing. right? Nice yep. and simple. Yeah. Um, if you put EQ between those two stages, though, the EQ takes away a lot of that gain. Okay. And so that's why Fender Blackface amps tend to be a lot cleaner than, say, Tweed amps, where the EQ is after the decaying stages. Amazing. Right? Okay. Amazing. So that's one of the reasons, anyway. Yep. That's something, an important difference, right? And sure. that's something that Marshall kept with. You know, they derived their early amps from basements, and the basements had the, the gain stages, then the EQ, then the phase inverter and the power amp. Right. So Marshall kept that design, you know, all through the years, whereas Fender did away with that when they went into the uh, black face amps, or right. indeed some of the brown face. Yeah, so two gain stages, EQ beforehand, right? So if you lift that EQ out of the, the circuit beforehand, now you've well, got you've down, got yeah. more gain yeah. and you can even get the clean channel to break up a bit more, right? And then uh, you step on the overdrive channel and it introduces this uh, second uh, 12AX7, and uh, the the volume of the clean preamp then sets how hard you're going to hit that second valve, right? Right. So if you had like one of the earlier made, if you had a maiden, you had a volume and a master, right? The volume was in between the two gain stages, yeah. and the master was at the end. Oh, so okay. where you set the master right. would affect how hard you drove whatever comes next, yeah. like for example a Page DS. That's that. That so one of the learning. I promise there'll be some guitar playing in a minute. Um, one of the learning points that was 
interesting for me was getting that relationship of gain. We'll get into that yeah. in a sec. Yeah. In, in regular overdrive pedals stacked up, it's much more straightforward, mm -hmm. but it seemed to be so tweaky because what, sure. what I think we're looking for in this kind of tone, or at least the tone that you and I seem to like, mm -hmm. is that point of where everything's coming off the guitar yeah, and you've got the pick attack and all those yeah, things yeah, we've, yeah, we've spoken yeah, about yeah. so much before that, that, that you exemplify. Let's have a listen then. I'm, I'm kind of interested to hear it stacking up. Dan and I'll have a play too. Yeah. Um, I, and apologies for the personal uh, rabbit hole here, but it, I do find it phenomenally interesting. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, do you, does one of you guys want to play? You go first, tweet? Simon. Um, so we've got, as you say, we've got... Excuse me. <laughs> the, the regular um, kind of maiden preamp the EQ lift works on that. That's right. And then yeah. we have the drive section after. Basically, yeah. There's also a mid boost, but we can get into that later. Okay. Yeah, th this foot switch can be assigned to either be an EQ lift or a mid boost. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Now, the master on this uh, is uh, at the end of the whole pedal. So unlike right. on the Maiden, yeah. the master was at the end of the Maiden, but if you had a, a, a page GS, that master was before the page GS, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which made it tricky if you wanted to turn down your clean channel, but not your overdrive sound, for example. Okay. Yeah, because then you lose overdrive. Yeah, you yeah. lose overdrive. That's right. what exactly what I was talking yeah, about yeah. when setting up those gain levels, because yeah, so, it's all interdependent. Yeah, so here the master's at the end. So, you know, if you're running into, say, a Hot Rod Deluxe, it's easy to use the master to set the overall volume and you can set your clean and dirt, you know. So uh, we're, obviously we've got Telly and Les Paul here to begin with. We can get lovely clean tone. I just turned the delay off so you can hear it. Uh, I'm very fumbly today, but there, I'm not going to yeah, make right. excuses. Yeah, right. One man's fumbly okay. is another ma lifetime's worth of work. <laughs> Dan? No. <laughs> yes. Come on. Let me. I just want to hear the. I want to hear the cleans. Yeah, I'll plug yeah. the strat in in a sec. Oh. What I can tell from the waveform is the uh, headroom and dynamic range in that is colossal. Believable. Yeah. There's a. It's got a very hot output on tap, and it's it's got a bit more range than the Maiden had. Yeah. Right. A and we are running it in straight preamp form here. Just. Yeah. We'll get onto the other in yeah. a sec. Yeah. Mm. About, I'm using all the licks Simon Simon showed me. <laughs> I'm stealing your licks. <laughs> I'm going to learn some of those. I don't have any, so it'll be the same old crap for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> That position too, right? Yeah. What I'm interested in now, so obviously the Leicester's pretty got healthy lungs, as does Dan's telly. Strat's a bit weak by comparison. Mm -hmm. How much gain are we going to add if we take the EQ yeah. out? Okay, so let's do that. We'll, we'll, we'll turn, turn the EQ lift has a, a control on it, <laughs> right? It so you can set the amount the EQ is lifted, which functions as a boost level, basically, right? So if we turn it on and you play, I'll bring it up. <laughs> Now, 
the volume is is relatively low, right? So you'll get you'll get tons out of the clean channel if you want it, and if you want some break up out of that channel, you can if you you know ride the volume harder. The yeah. trouble with doing that is, of course, it has repercussions on what happens when you go to the overdrive channel. Yeah, yeah, of course. So okay. you know, generally speaking, for a clean tone, I would leave it somewhere around in the region of like I don't know between nine and twelve o'clock. Yeah, you know, but that's subjective, of course. It's really interesting. So the EQ lift, um, what Simon said before, in many Fender type amps, if the EQ section is between two stages of amplification, what happens is it's a passive EQ, right? So it's reductive. Yeah. yeah. If it if the EQ section wasn't there, effectively your EQ controls would all be on ten. They'd all be maxed out. Yeah. Ish, ish. Yeah. So by having the lift, that's what you've got. If you introduce mm -hmm. the EQ section, so if you think about your deluxe reverb, for example, what you're doing is reducing from there. And that explains why you get so much signal loss mm -hmm. with sure. the EQ section. I had never quite put it together as, mm -hmm. right. as straightforwardly as that before. Mm -hmm. have, a, have, a, have a little taste of that, Dan. <laughs> Wow, that's so cool. That is so cool. Uh, so that's, I mean, honestly, an EQ lift is a, you know, it's many amps have them, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's 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 a feature that's been around forever, and it's just a useful way to get a boost and a fattening of the tone. Sure. Sometimes you want that fattening of the tone for a lead boost because it mm, introduces yeah, yeah. more of the mids back in there, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially with single core pickups, it's kind of nice. And it's a it's a nature of the EQ itself. Um, you put you know put anything between those stages, and that EQ. Uh, even as Mick was saying, even with everything up, then because there's still stuff in, in the circuit, right? There's still going to be, right. and guess, the EQ lift gets rid of everything. Yeah. Basically, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not, it's very cool. Not dissimilar to having all this connected, is it? You disconnect it, and it's, it's different, even, yeah. even when it's mm -hmm. supposedly yeah. transparent. Okay. Cool. I'll bring up one other thing while we're on the clean channel. There's also this mid boost feature. Okay, I don't know if you're aware. Actually, the mid boost is on your maiden too. You just got to pull the mid part. I have right? it pulled. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. do. Okay, so you play with it on. There I you have go. It pulled, yeah. There yeah. you go. Just because predominantly play with strats and I think yeah. it helps yeah, fair the enough. kind of sounds I, yeah, fair that, enough, that I fair like, enough. just a bit fatter. What the mid boost does is it actually increases the size of the treble capacitor, funnily enough. Okay. And so by making that capacitor a lot bigger, Which the treble down. control basically turns into a sort of a mid range control, mm. right? Oh, so right. so if we like, if we put this, this switch here allows you to select what this foot switch does, right? Yeah. So we'll turn the EQ lift off and so if you play now, the mid, uh, and then I'll turn the mid boost on, and it'll be dependent on where the treble's set as to how obvious it is. It's relatively subtle there, right? Yeah. But if you ride the treble higher, you'll see a much bigger difference, right? So. Loads of strap fatness in mm -hmm. there in a big way. Yeah, yeah. And so then you could uh, choose to, for example, when you step on this, that's the mid boost. Yeah. Or if I raise this as well, well then you're activating both the mid boost and the EQ lift. At oh, the same I see. Time. So it's not either or. It's it can be both at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the trouble with both at once is that the EQ lift is so powerful it takes over. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No so that's basically the clean channel. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, this is a three-way bright switch, but uh, you know that's it. The bright, it's in bright one, right, uh, right now. So it's got a bit of shimmer on the top. Uh, well, we'll turn. We'll leave the. Well, the mid boost isn't on anyway. Yeah, so there's the overdrive channel. <laughs> A 
about we add the mid boost to that just to see a subtle difference, right? If we use the mid boost with the. Fat, isn't it? That's amazing. Telly, get a sense of how sensitive it is. What I did there is I turned the mid boost on, I started to lift the EQ out and the unbelievable amount of extra gain was like, yeah, okay, we need to dial back some other things mm -hmm. elsewhere there. Yeah, yeah. So what is it about the, uh, the ODS uh, circuit in particular? Um, that's Overdrive Special by Dumble, if anyone's confused by that. What is it about that circuit that we love so much. Is wow. there something in particular about the circuit that... Because whenever I hear it, especially when I hear players that have got great touch <laughs> going to that sort of circuit, there's something about the dynamics of it that's like, oh, okay, I... I, I, I don't know if I can sort of summarise anything in like a sentence or something, but... Um... The thing about the ODS circuit is you've got four gain stages. So right. that's potentially quite a lot cascaded together. But the circuit has quite a lot of controls and it allows you to tailor exactly what, what you know, how each gain stage Just is goes cascading into the next into one. The next one yeah. right? And that's the art of it, really. Right. Yeah, right. In a lot of amps which have multiple gain stages, you have one gain stage, right? And so that's it, and you just and that kind of there's a cascading effect from that. Whereas mm. here you can actually control every single you know, stage individually. Even the EQ, I noticed, for example, when Mick was playing, you, you reach for the treble knob, yep. and when, when you're on the overdrive channel, it actually didn't have that much effect. That's because the EQ is pre-drive, right? Okay. So if EQ is post-drive, it's much more obvious, right? right. But if it's pre-drive and it's driven quite a lot, the overdrive kind of soaks that up and it's yeah. not as obvious. It's still very important and it's kind of fun, actually, to, to, to tweak that, the, the EQ because then you're determining which frequencies Get are being driven. driven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just just to um I just want to get back to the clean channel for a second sure. and just kick the light speed on mm. just to get a sense of yeah. a an yeah. overdrive pedal going yeah. into a clean channel, you know, which is what we, we use a lot. Yeah. Um, Sounds fantastic. It's a very nice. different thing, but so even as a as a pedal platform going to the clean channel, yeah, yeah, it is it so it's so open. Yeah, so you can just treat it like the front end of your amp. Yeah, you would, yeah, yeah. Like you would any other? Right. Yeah. I think this is a pretty dynamic setup, though. Right, running yeah. into this rig. It's, yeah, yeah. It's 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 not going to compress and get really small quickly. Sure, yeah, sure. It sounds yeah, it's big it's, and open. Um, so we've got a very very high headroom power amp. We've got Electro Voice. 
uh, EV12, EVM12L speakers. Is that right? EVM12L. EVM12L. Yeah, the classic EVs. So it's a really revealing tone, and it's one that I used uh, for the gigs with Andy because we've got three guitars on stage. It just needs to be as clear as possible, you know. Mm. And it, it works for me, and I like it. But that gives us a really good opportunity to hear all that pick inflection yeah, and yeah, all, exactly, all the stuff. Exactly, yeah, definitely. Um, I just okay then. Let's. Can we hear the overdrive with the Lester again? We heard it at the at the top of the <laughs> show. <laughs> Fiddle to your heart's content, yeah, Simon, because no, obviously you know yeah, it much better yeah, than we do. Fine, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thing I'll do is when you go to the overdrive channel if you want to have the the mid boost off on the clean but you want it on on the overdrive you just put that downward so now when you activate this it'll it'll it'll, it'll go straight in. to the mid boost oh, yeah okay yeah, yeah. 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 so then you can just reserve this for the EQ lift right and also these features are all remote switchable too right so you can set them up for G3 to switch them. you could do it in G3 so you could have one touch Supreme clean, no mid boost, no EQ lift. Yeah, yeah. To overdrive, mid oh, boost, yeah. and EQ lift, oh, or any combination fact, thereof. Yeah. Well, you've now presented me with a dilemma that I can do all this switching it remotely. And I've. So as soon as I heard this rig. Get in the queue, cowboy. Right, as soon as I heard this rig, I was it was an existential crisis for me. Because I. There's something about. So, you know, because I use a lot of flanges and that sort of stuff. And, yeah. and, and I love the clarity that that brings to it. Um, and you know some of the tones that Mick gets, yeah. especially out of Les Paul. Yeah. yeah, the Lester seems to really, really suit this rig. It's unreal. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. unreal. It does. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. But you know, being able to program it all to come on and it's just, you know, it's yeah. amazing. What I do with my G3 is I've actually got it. So I go to preset one and, and it's on, and then I've actually got these in stomp box mode, so I can go like overdrive channel, mid boost, EQ lift. Oh, okay, so so there. I can do it manually or within right. presets, right? Yeah, awesome. Because luckily you've built all that clever stuff into G three. <laughs> so yeah. we we rudely interrupted you, Simon. Please. No, 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 it's all please, please carry on. on. something like that um, and then use this kind of for the more button you know if you want to <laughs> cleans up pretty well you know seems um, to <laughs> yeah it seems to clean it's up that easy. sound i tell you what what i'm what i'm finding really interesting so that the this isn't about how close can we get to a dumbbell overdrive special sound today because a we don't have one here and it's that's it's only really part of the debate however what everyone seems to think the dumbbell overdrive special sound is when you hear it in a regular overdrive pedal mm. is almost very compressed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Loads and loads of um, overdrive, pronounced rolled off top end, and crazy vocal mid range. Right. Yeah. People seem to think that's what they sound like because they do sound like that in the hands mm -hmm. of some people. Mm -hmm. But having been lucky enough to play a couple and been around them, they sound much more like that to me. Mm -hmm. Very present, high end, right. endless headroom. Yes. Much right, more yeah. aggression in the overdrive than you would than you would think. It's not that smooth yeah, no. thing that everyone, yeah. well, sorry, not everyone, that's a generalization, that many people th seem to think that it is. Yeah. It's much, a, it, for want of a, 
potentially aggravating term, it's a much more real guitar sound. It's a, yeah, I think it's a little harder to play than you might expect. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, c c because there's that dyna dynamic range in there. Yeah. And so. And it's really revealing, right? That yeah. the, the way the EQ sits, and but also you're talking about how aggressive it is, and that uh, that aggression leads you to be able to be so dynamic with your picking. Yeah, yeah, right? totally. Which is yeah. 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 We, I, I've heard, I've, there's a few players I've heard through Dumble, through a Dumble, and I remember hearing Robin Ford play through it. Mm -hmm. And the articulation was extraordinary. Yeah. And and that for me, that's the thing, because it's that articulation that actually reveals the player. Yeah. You no, know? it's because it just, it didn't sound like a Dumble, it sounded like Robin. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think, you know, as a sort of, as a tangent, that is rather what links all the Dumble players I can think of. It's what links them. They sound so much like themselves. They do, um, yeah, yeah. Um, who, whoever that might be. Okay, I just want to hear this guitar yeah, for through sure. it. Um, yeah, yeah. This is for Southpaw335, who always says, please, can you play the 335 more? <laughs> Interesting thing about the Dumble ODS style preamp too is, um, when I was making amps before I started messing around with the, the Dumble style circuits, I was going more of a, more the route of um, to get gain. You'd uh, you'd use the preamp to get some gain, uh, and to keep that tight and focused, you'd use things like small interstage coupling caps. So you'd you'd fine tune the EQ along the gain stages mm -hmm. so that it was a tight focused tone, and that's kind of a a, a tradition in uh, in rock style preamps. Yeah. Okay. And then I'd run it into a power amp, which was actually big sounding, because I actually uh, grew up playing things like Vox AC30s, which don't have any negative feedback. Yeah. So it was a big, loose, open, mm -hmm. fat sound in the power amp, and a tighter, firmer sound in the preamp that married together to give you this interesting result, and that's what some of my amps were. Right. But the Dumble approach is totally different. The power amp is really high headroom, and uh, not uh, like it doesn't have it has feedback right and it's got you, you, we associate it with like big power supplies and EV speakers mm -hmm. and then the preamp actually has a lot of bass frequencies going through it or the ability to dial them in right so it's kind of the opposite of say how you might uh, design uh, a higher gain Marshall style amp yeah. it's quite different so you've got lots of complexity available in the preamp but because it's all in there you could also dial it into sound like mush if you wanted to yeah, right? right as you say there's a lot of gain in there right yeah but it's not really about high gain tones per se yeah it's all about fine-tuning the EQ in between each stage so that it cascades just right to produce the end result that's where you want it So instantly, loads more bass, nowhere near as bright sounding as that mm -hmm. guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if that's going to be too much. The thing to remember about the bright switch is like bright switches on many amps, it's dependent on the volume control setting, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. So when I go to humbuckers, what I might sometimes do is leave it in this position, yeah. but roll this down a touch. So that'll yeah. clean it up a little bit and, and make it match the output of the single coils a more, bit more. And, and the bright cap is more brighter. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Yeah. And then pump the master a bit more if you need if to. You need to. can do also is you've got lows and high switches for that channel right okay just like you do on a page ds yeah, so you're yeah, familiar yeah. with those already but if you want it to be brighter on the overdrive but not you don't you don't want it on the clean channel you can just obviously turn the highs on on the overdrive channel right and it'll be much more aggressive and bright but i'm not sure what you're going for <laughs> 
So, as you will know, neither Dan nor I are high gain players. We don't really do high gain in the sort of modern description of that term. There's a ton of gain there, yeah. but it doesn't all go off into compression and losing the high end and thick and like... Soupy. Yeah, you, yeah. You, I, I've always got this. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which on a good day, yeah, I really yeah, want. Yeah, I yeah, really, I right really want that edge on the pick so you get every inflection and every little yeah. bit. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that's really good. I mean, so, it's a sound I'm familiar with because it's essentially a version of something I'm using already. But yeah, yeah. So what's the relationship then between... So this being a preamp, mm -hmm. right? And then we've got a power amp. Where does the phase inverter sit? Yeah. So if you think about uh, a traditional guitar amplifier, most, most guitar amps... Um, I have to pretend I'm Jeff Beck now, which I'm not. <laughs> um, but anyway, most most uh, guitar amps have uh, are push pull designs. Yeah. Uh, some are not. Some are single ended. But a push pull power amp is, for example, well, an example would be say a Fender Deluxe Reverb, mm -hmm. a Twin, or um, a Boogie, or pretty much any amp here. These are all push pull amps, as far as I know. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong there. But um, a push pull power amp has a preamp, and then it has a power amp. But part of that power amp is a phase inverter, mm -hmm. and that phase inverter is is a tube usually, and or a valve, and that valve uh, uh, splits the phase into two opposite phases, mm -hmm. which then hits your output valves, uh, and then the output transformer couples them back into a single signal uh, to drive your loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. right? So the phase inverter turns out, you know, its job is just to 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 be a, to, to make a push pull power amp work the way it's designed to, mm -hmm. um, and it turns out that it has a it can have a large impact on the on the tone that you get out sure. of your amp, yeah, and in particular on the overdrive nature and the amount of overdrive your amp produces. Mm -hmm. So you can get overdrive from the phase inverter if you turn your preamp up loud enough such that it overdrives it the input the, of your phase inverter. Right. Right. The same way we're talking about cascading gain is just another an, stage. It's just another it's stage, stage which yeah. can get get overdriven, right? And traditional non-master volume amps um, like, uh, you know, a Marshall Plexi or something, um, or a Tweed Deluxe or a Vox AC30, um, a lot of the overdrive that you hear when you crank those up is actually coming from the phase inverter, Amazing. right? Okay. Yeah. Now, Dumble designs, uh, it's not that you can't get overdrive from the phase inverter too, but they're a bit different because mm. most of the overdrive is actually designed, I think, to come from the preamp itself, sure. right? Okay. So traditionally, the Dumbles, at least my understanding and the way I run them is the, 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 the preamp generates uh, uh, the, um, yeah, the overdrive and then the phase inverter and the power amp, it's more like a clean platform which then amplifies it and has lots of dynamic range right right which is i know how you like things to be like yeah it just i mean having had the conversation this morning and, and going over it again a bit now it does it it puts into focus a lot of the things that i've come to love about amps over the year but years but never really understood why mm. and that whole I mean, how many times have we said we like high headroom power amps and high headroom guitar amps and i guess what I'm talking about there is actually a high headroom power section. Sure. Because it's great if it breaks up a bit in the front end, especially if you slam it with mm -hmm. pedals and stuff. But right. So, yeah, okay, yeah. so that was a feature of of the way he did things. Yeah, I mean, it's not that, as I say, the nice thing about the Dumble design is you can you can tweak it so that any stage All overdrives. Around. So yeah, if you yeah. want to overdrive the, the, the power section, including the phase inverter, you can, of course. Mm -hmm. You can turn up the master volume and it will push the phase inverter and the, and, and the output stage harder. But I think, you know, uh, there's so much goodness to get from the preamp that for me, it works best to to, to run into a, a loud, clean power amp sure. and use the preamp as a preamp overdrive generating device. Right. You know? So potentially silly question then. Um, if we've got our preamp there and our power amp there, mm -hmm. where's the phase inverter? It's in the power amp. It's there. Yeah. Yeah, so the it's all designed in. Yeah, the power the, the phase inverter is part of the power amp. Because okay. there's a push-pull yeah. design on, on either yeah. side. And it needs that. So somewhere in there are some 12x7s there. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, interesting. there's a 12x7 doing that. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you have an amp like a Marshall Plexi, you know, and you dime it, 
uh, there's barely any overdrive coming in the preamp. There's a little bit. Yeah, right? yeah, right. right? Yeah, like you, you'll know from the pedal I make called the Constable, which yeah. is a, a, a plexi style preamp, that it does break up a bit on its own, but there's not actually much gain or distortion to be generated within that pedal. So if you want to get more, you actually have to push the power amp. And so you push, and that's what happens when you turn up the master, not the master, the volume on a traditional Marshall plexi style amp. That phase inverter gets driven super hard, and that's part of the sound of the plexi amp, right? Yeah, right. Where does that volume control sit on a plexi? Oh, it hits right after the it sits right after the first gain stage. So you've got gain stage one. Yep. Uh, well, there's two gain stages in parallel in a plexi marshal. You know, you've got the, the, the four inputs, right? Yes. You've got yep. two separate volumes, right? Yep. Yep. They're in parallel to each other, right? Right. And each of those hits a volume control right after the, the gain stage. So the so the volume control on a plexi, like the gain in that in V1 is set. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then, sure. yeah, okay. And then the volume control controls how much signal is fed into to, uh, the second gain stage. Right. Okay. Which is common to both of the, uh, the channels. Both the channels, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, coming in parallel, hitting the volume controls, and they're mixed with mixing resistors into the, uh, the second gain stage. Right. Right. And so if you dime either one of those volume controls, you'll get some edge, you know, some, some clipping in, in V2. Right. Okay. Uh, but not much, but it's a nice sound and, sure. and there's a little bit to be had there. And indeed on a Marshall Plexi, if you turn up the volume, that's what will happen. It'll d drive that. But at the same time, it'll drive your power tubes and your phase inverter. And it's all of those things working in conjunction, which give you that magic Plexi sound, right? Yeah, right. So the phase inverter is super important, right? So my approach with preamps has always been, it's kind of, maybe some people would think it's a bit crazy, but I've, I, I like to have a lot of outputs, a lot of output on tap on these preamps, because that's how they are in guitar amps. They have a massive output, right. which enables you to drive the phase inverter hard to get that break up right. and the power tubes in turn, right? So I like to be able to turn these up if I want to and drive something afterwards to emulate the effect of playing a real guitar amplifier, right? It's amazing. Yeah, And then we start to step into a problem or two about levels and the difference between preamps and overdrive pedals, which yep, we've come... Instrument with. level and line level. So, so yeah. this is interesting. I think we could do this in the context of the Hot Rod Deluxe. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, we'll come back to the Artisan in a second. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who do not have <laughs> possibly stereo power or, amp... Or any, any kind of power amp and, and cab setup for that reason, you know, one of the benefits you can get from doing it this way is to use an amp such as the Hot Rod Deluxe, and we've done this before, any amp that has an effects loop, you can go straight from the preamp into the effects loop return of your amp, which is really cool. We'll have a listen to that. But what if your amp doesn't have an effects loop and mm. you want to go straight in the front? Mm. Mm. All of a sudden, your valve pre then, bearing in mind what you just said about you like having a tremendous amount of output, doesn't necessarily work into the front of your amp. Yeah. So a couple of things to say there. I'd say that most people who make um, valve preamps, um, I think the tendency, nor, and it makes sense, of, uh, I think, perhaps for most people, is to not have this massive output. Yeah. They take the preamp out of an amp and they make it and they say, oh, this is too hot to drive my delay and reverb pedal. Yeah. Let's attenuate it down, just like an effects loop would do. Mm -hmm. right? An effects loop has uh, an attenuation stage and a buffer, right, which then drives your effects. So a lot of people who design preamps put that right in the preamp. Yeah. So that then you've got an attenuated. Yeah, a lot of people just have a passive connection between, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like... Let, just, let's just talk about that. So regular viewers will know that Dan and I are, shall we say, um, cautious of effects loops because they vary so much. And something I've learned this morning, which I, I didn't know, was what you just said. So we, we were having the conversation about Dan's matchless, which has got, what did you say, some 30 volts? I measured, I measured 30 mm -hmm. plus volts on the yeah. on the send. And of course, there's no pedal that I've got will take that. No. Put that in yeah. context, can you? So let's yeah. talk about line level and instrument level for a second and where 30 volts lives in that world. Sure. Yeah. Well, 30 volts is much hotter than line level. Yeah. Right? Like, um, you know, line level might be, say, uh, plus four dBU mm -hmm. uh, or sometimes higher, right? Um, but the output of most amplifier preamps is way hotter than that. Yeah. Way, I mean, it doesn't have to be, right? I mean, if you want to keep your amp clean, you might run it down there somewhere and then the power amp's clean. But there's this massive output on tap which allows that amplifier to drive the phase inverter and the power tubes hard mm. and generate the sound that we get. So that's one thing I found with the matchless. You know, you're getting this amazing sound from it. No, and, and I was just seeing what the voltage was, was you know, that was coming out of it. 
and then because on the matches if I you know drive the preamp stage and that gives you this lovely thing well I yeah. thought what well, if I put something in the loop yeah what's going to happen and as I reduced the volume I, I put a attenuator that would take that voltage yeah as I reduced the that level coming back in, yeah. I'm reducing the signal that's hitting the phase inverter, and yeah. suddenly all that crunchy goodness went. It was gone, yeah. yeah. You know, so no matter how hard I had the, the yeah. preamp turned up, it didn't matter because yeah. yeah. it wasn't slamming the phase and, inverter valve. Uh, yeah, right. And especially in that amp because it's a, an EF86, yeah. which is a single gain stage, right? Right. Yeah. It's not like a 12X7, which has two, two gain stages right. within it. It's one gain stage, albeit a, a hotter gain stage. It's yeah. got more output and tap than, say, a single gain stage within a 12X7. Mm -hmm. But you've got the single gain stage pushing the phase inverter. So that twelve that EF eighty six won't clip. No. Like people think they're like EF eighty six overdrive. It's usually not that that's overdriving. Right. It's, it's just pushing the power amp. It's that that's all gain staging. And that's all, and that's all staging. post effects loop. Right. Yeah, right. And right. that's a problem with effects loops. And that's why a lot of guys don't bother or like effects loops in traditional old school amps. Yeah, yeah. Like say if you have a Marshall Plexi style amp. Even if you have like a lot of new marshals, they have a loop, right? But that loop is still pre the phase inverter. Right. So most of the drive when you really drive that thing is going to come from the phase inverter. Yeah. So it's still it's 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 still not I'm not saying it's not worth having because it's still post preamp and you will get some drive from the preamp. So right. to unpack that a little bit then, if it's a series loop, mm -hmm. i.e. If, if all your signals going through the yeah, whole yeah. loop, so you come out the pre and you've got well, could be thirty, could be fifty volts. Yeah, it could be fifty volts, yeah. In order to make the effects loop effective and not slam your delay pedal so hard that it won't work anymore, or yeah. at least it's so distorted that it sounds awful, you then need to bring that level down in order to send it out of the effects loop, and then you need to recover it again afterwards. Yes. So you've brought it down, you've attenuated it, and you've usually run through some kind of buffer, like there'll be a buffer circuit which, are, which will better interface with your mm -hmm. effects, right? So then you'll go through your delay and reverb, and then now you've got like typically an instrument level signal, like a yeah. really small signal. And, so right? and that's not going to drive the phase inverter it, yeah. in the power tubes. If we were saying plus 4 dB for line level instrument sig levels, uh, like, way, way down. Like way there. down, like 0.2 volts or something, you know, it's like less than a volt, right? Yeah. Um, so we've got 100 times magnification here, potentially, from 0.2 to 50 volts. Yeah, I mean, but but it's things, remember, we don't hear things linearly. No, no, right? no, yeah, but, I know. But, but yeah, yeah, it's a massive difference. It's a right? huge difference, yeah. So, um, what we do is we introduce another gain stage at the tail end, right? Like uh, uh, the effects return, right? And the, the function of that is to bring that tiny signal back up to the level that the phase inverter needs to be able to drive the power tubes, right? right? Now, here's the problem. Okay, all good, right? That sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the problem? Well, you <laughs> so you've attenu attenuated the signal. Now you've brought it back up again. So you can drive, say, the, your power amp hard. Yeah. But now you've got drive happening post effects. Yes. The, the idea, the whole idea of an effects loop is to put effects before the drive. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this, you're never going to get around it 100 percent if you're just, going for that old school power amp breakup. Because yeah. if that, if you bring that drive back up and you've got your delay in the effects loop, then that delay is still going to be smacking the phase inverter, and yeah. you're still getting your limiting there. And the power tubes. Yeah, and the power tubes and all that stuff. But you yeah. know, so that does explain a lot. It actually. does. It does. But, but it works sometimes, right? Sometimes it works kind of well enough. Like if sure. you're not running your plexi super super hot, maybe you're not going for a Van Halen sound. Mm. Maybe you're going for something that's a bit more on the edge. Mm. You know, even like verging on ACDC territory or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, you might get away yeah. with it, and it might work well enough. Yeah. yeah. You know. So one thing, like. I'm a big fan of Dave Friedman's effects loops yeah. and their proper instrument level their effects instrument loops. Level, yeah. And he's tweaked them to a point where they just sound fantastic. And, um, you know, they'll, you can stick basically anything in them and they mm -hmm. sound great. But his, his amps are designed to work really well with that instrument level signal coming back in. Yeah. You know, so That's right, the, yeah. it, they, it can be done. Yeah, and it is done. The point being, the amount of difference from one amp to the next can be colossal so colossal yeah. that you you think your pedal was broken sure. yeah. which is which yeah. is what yeah. happens in the matchless right exactly <laughs> exactly it's, yeah so you can't this is why you know, you know, there are effects loops and there are effects loops but yeah. incidentally the matchless because it doesn't have that uh, active effects loop right mm -hmm. there's there's no buffer stage no. and there's no return stage no. it actually makes a really nice power amp because you're you're seeing the phase inverter directly yeah so, so you're plugging back, back into the and yeah. i and i and i've so i've done that with the squire yeah, with the, yeah with the squire or the constable. And it sounds 
flippin' fantastic. Try the constable into the re- okay. actually turn your mattress All right. All right. and crank up the master okay. and see what happens. I bet it'll sound really good. Awesome. Yeah. Cause, oh, cause then Here we the, go. The danger with effects loops too is if you're going for that traditional driven power amp tone, mm. is you don't and, and it's got an effects loop in there, you don't know the nature of that effects loop return gain stage. Mm. It could even be solid state, like yeah, in the yeah. case of the Fender, right? right? So if you push it with a really hot signal it's from a preamp, who knows how that yeah. drive character yeah, is going to yeah, be, sure, right? Sure. Yeah. Interesting. So that's why, but a pedal like this relies on preamp gain, so it's really not an issue, right? Because the gain's coming from here, yeah. not from the power amp, yeah. right? And it's and looking I'll, for a wide open. And that's yeah, it's looking hit. for a wide open yeah. thing to yeah. hit and do yeah. its do its thing. And that's the tendency with most outboard preamps. Sure. The, 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 the overdrives generally, like even whether it be a Friedman or a Marshall or anybody who makes outboard preamps, usually those things are, are made to, to 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 do all their overdriven sounds within the preamp, yeah. and you're not necessarily expected to have to drive the power amp that Got hard, yep. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's let's move from rack power amp and slightly insane late eighties electro voice speakers to something much more, shall we say, normal. Um Hot Rod Deluxe. It'll just be a little minute while I move the microphone, but what we'll hear first is the juggler into the effects loop return of the Hot Rod Deluxe. So we're gonna completely Bypass the front end. Okay. And we shall then invoke the front end after that. Yeah. Right. Finger cool. snap? Finger snap. Yeah, let's do it. And we're back in the room. What has changed is the boogie power amp and cab are now not in the game. Ah. Uh-huh. We're going into the effects loop return of the dearly beloved Hot Rod Deluxe and we're hitting it with the juggler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh. <laughs> So real conversation earlier, something's happening there. Um, yeah, I mean, if I dig in, it's it's breaking up a touch, which yeah. is probably coming from pushing the effects return on yeah, this amp. Yeah. So whatever is handling the return, yeah, and then the phase inverter, this is hitting that pretty hard. Fairly hard, yeah, it is. Yeah. Bearing in mind, also just worth saying that in the Hot Rod Deluxe, the power amp is wide open. There's no volume control. That's right. Yeah. Once you plug into that effects loop return. Mm, so yeah. just if you do try this at home, please put your pedal masters to zero before you do it. Yeah. Because you'll blow your head off. Yeah. Yeah. But so the amp's wide open, hitting it with this, it is overdriving that phase inverter stage. Somewhat at least, yeah. Or yeah. It, it seems to me it's a little bit dirtier than it was before. Yeah. 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 But yeah. we can attenuate that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean you can attenuate it just on the master as it is. But the way the output switch is, you've got full output, which is the equivalent of what the preamp in an amp would usually be, which is super hot, you know, mm-hmm. maybe got to like 50 volts or something crazy. And then if you attenuate it, that's actually instrument level, but still preamp. Like it's still designed to go into a power amp. Okay. Oh, OK, awesome. Yeah, okay. So, so it doesn't, it doesn't uh, like roll off all the high end in order to make it more friendly to go into the front end. Have shrinkage, yeah, let's have a listen to that a second. It just makes the taper on the volume more more easy to set, right? Sounds killer. Thank you. 
interestingly enough, we are a fair bit louder than we were through the Mesa yeah. um, as well, and I'm, I'm enjoying that. I think that's, yeah, just because that's, <laughs> that's like one. you say, like when you plug into the effects return of an amp, it, you may or may not encounter this, right? Mm. So on this particular amp, the, there's no master control as part of the power amp, right? Sure. A lot of amps, when you plug into the effects return, the master still works, right? Yeah, master, so yeah. it's a little easier to dial in, yeah. right? The matchless, the master still yeah. works, all right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 because yeah. it's a, it's a post-phase inverter master, yes. I think, on the yeah. Maxless. Yeah. That's why, yeah. So that's yeah, why it still works. Okay, the, yeah. so the last part of this puzzle, then, is plugging into the front end of the amplifier. Yeah, right. so let's say you have an amplifier that doesn't have an effects loop. You don't have a power amp, you don't have an amplifier that has an effects loop, but you do want to use some of this nice valvey goodness up front to juice up your regular guitar amp. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were using the setup that I have, that then becomes a problem because it's only preamp level mm. that's coming out of it. So if you mm. want to go into the front, you've got to really turn that amp down and it's just not optimized. Mm -hmm. But mm. what, are the, what are the main reasons for that, Simon? Is it purely a, a level thing or is it, are there impedances involved? Uh, well, I mean, there's, um, yeah, on, on the Maiden, uh, seeing as it's basically a preamp derived from an amplifier, the output of that preamp is very hot. Mm. So first of all, if you want to reintroduce it into another amp, you would have to attenuate it. Okay, not a big deal. You can lower the master, or if the master is still too finicky, you can put like a, a switch on it to lower it still, so you've got more range on the on the master, and that's what I've done here. Um, and then the output impedance of the preamp is actually relatively high. Yeah. Not so high that it won't work well into, uh, you know, uh, most delays and reverbs in terms of what the... Uh, that pedal wants to see, but a lot higher than traditional uh, pedals or preamps put out, which might be as low as like 100 ohms or something like sure. that, right? Sure. So on this juggler, though, I've got a high headroom uh, MOSFET um, a buffer at the output. And the thing about it is, yeah, so it'll match the impedance nicely into your effects. Uh, it'll drive long cables, but also because it's high headroom, it will also be able to handle the massive output, you know, 50 wow. volts wow. without falling apart, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, oh, the other thing is when you go in the front, of course, you go in the front of an amp, so you're, you're double preamping it, right? And the preamplifier in the amp does a lot to color the tone of your amp, sure. right? And so when you double this up, what you tend to happen is you get like a scoopy sound followed by a scoopy sound. It tends to sound harsh and overly bass. Because you've got like that EQ into this preamp EQ, into that preamp EQ. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, this basically when anybody designs a preamp that's designed to go into the front of an amp, which, mo which and when people design preamp pedals, mostly that's what they're doing, yeah, right? right? Most yeah. guys are running the front of an amp, and that's because that's the way people play, right? They run front, front of amp. So there's some kind of um, tone, tone circuitry, some kind of filtering going on mm -hmm. at the end of the circuit to try to make the sounds less harsh, yeah. you know, okay. maybe restore some mids, maybe take off a little of the high end. Yeah. And that's basically what this does in the third output mode. Okay. Is it, So you've got the attenuated signal and it makes it a little bit more front of amp friendly tonally. Yeah, wow. I mean, if, if you do want to hear more about that um, going into the effects loop return of uh, a regular guitar amp, we have done videos on that in mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. I think the point we made about that at the time and would continue to make is, let's say you've got something like a Hot Rod Deluxe, mm. And your next option, we did a video called What's After the Hot Rod Deluxe, and we sort of decided that you've got to spend a tremendous amount of money for to, to get a significant yeah. uplift on the hot It's yeah. a fantastic amp, but let's say you want to do that and you want a slightly different sound and you want some more options, a decent preamp into the effects loop return can radically change the amp. And we should, you know, give a shout out to um, Phil Effectrode. We should give a shout out to Victory in their V4 line. Mm -hmm. There's some good mm -hmm. options Absolutely. out there yeah. Yeah, in yeah, addition definitely. to Simon's stuff. Course, but it, it yeah. can radically change the nature of your amp without having to spend another £2,000 dollars or English doubloons or whatever it is on a whole new amp. That's right. The, the other thing I'd add to that is those all these preamps can be super useful for the home recording crowd, yeah. right? A lot of guys use them into their doors for recording, right? Right. Um, so, it, or a digital setup, you know, or when you're running, you're not even using an amp. The right? next time you come back, we're going to do a low volume thing because mm. we won't get to it today, but Simon's doing some really interesting stuff that 
is a different approach to all of that, and that would be a great subject be for next awesome. year. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in the sure. meantime, okay, in the meantime, yeah. so let's go in front of the app. What I'm going to do, Simon, if you wouldn't mind playing a bit, just to right. re remind us what we're hearing. Oh, okay, yeah. wake you up um so we're now going to come out of the preamp uh the, the effective return. Absolute return and we're going to go into the front of the amp just exactly if you were pr plugging into the front of any guitar amplifier that's right yep yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. here we have our unsullied the amp. What we'll do now is it, it's already got a filter on the output but in general um, I didn't want it to be too marked because I didn't want it to make to, to sort of put a blanket on it. Right. So as it is right now this is going to brighten the sound of that a little bit. So normally if you're running it front of amp I would probably adjust it a little bit. Sure. Yeah. yeah so just optimize away. it you know. You could turn the bright switch off for a start. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah and probably just to match the, the level, maybe attenuate that a bit. So now it might sound similar to the amp because I've kind of the EQ set a bit more neutral. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. What if what would happen if I went back to the middle output setting? Oh, we'll try. It'll just be a lot bright. It'll be brighter. And the top one would just blow it to pieces, presumably. Yeah, I mean, it would just be like pushing the front of your amp super hot. Okay, yeah, let's not yeah. do that. You don't need to do that, yeah. I mean, obviously, you can go in between these two extremes, right? If that's too dark, then you can turn the bright switch back on here. Maybe turn it level up a bit, yeah. So you can use it as a basically now, it's almost like a glorified boost pedal, right? It's a valve right. boost with some EQ, right? Yeah. Which might give you a sweeter tone or not, but it's another way of sculpting your EQ. But that's on the clean channel, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's hear some drive. so interesting because you can now definitely hear the Hot Rod Deluxe, right? Yeah. You can yeah, hear... Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, It yeah. has a very specific uh, mid-range character going through that EQ section now. And not... not it's I, I don't necessarily like it or more or less. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, you can definitely hear the Hot Rod Deluxe now. But so that, that's... So what's interesting about that is that preamps... Uh, 
Basically. Sorry, Andy Sorry. Timmons. Andy Timmons, Andy Timmons, Andy Timmons, Timmons. in the room. Oh no, I already. What is this insanely great? I already, I, already, I, already, I already couldn't oh play, and now you've arrived to make me feel worse. <laughs> no, dude, you oh said my incredible. Goodness. I'm like, oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. Please. <laughs> you said incredible. Please, please. Sorry to crash. No, 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 please crash. Uh, and it's just uh, walked in, so uh, thank yeah. you so much. The real player has arrived. No, 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 I heard it from down the block. It was <laughs> So... As you mentioned, Mick, when you plug into the uh, into the front of the amp, of course, it takes on the character of that particular yeah, amp, yeah, right? Yeah, that's and that's right. we're all you know. Whenever you plug an overdrive or distortion pedal in, we're yeah, all at the mercy it. of the amp, right? Yeah. So the nice one of the nice things about preamps is that because you can run them into power amps, it takes some of that variability out of the equation, mm -hmm. right? So if you're doing a gig and you've got backline, you know, you can if you can run into a relatively flat sounding power amp. Yeah. You can have the sound you want because right. you took it with you to the gig. Very it, good. It, right? it neatly explains, as it? it neatly explains that whole question of do, you know, do you do go the, the effects loop return preamp route or why can't I just plug straight in the front? They are radically different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes the front of amp might be better. You might yeah. like it more, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you might try it and go, yeah, that works wicked, and you're and you're done, and just run front of amp. But you've got all options. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, well, I'm I'm looking forward to getting into that a bit more. Yep. Before we um, sign off, it would be just great to hear the what you've called the valve tone crafter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The artisan. Yeah. It's basically it's a valve. Um, Overdrive, but it's definitely more. He's uh, got kind of some fuzzy kind of like qualities to it. It's not as uh, extreme as some, you know, real fuzz pedals. Yeah. But it's my take on a sort of fuzz idea. What's the inspiration for that then? Um, really, I just started experimenting. Do you remember a few years ago when I was on and we were talking about? I had that little pedal which I temporarily had called the architect. Yeah. And yeah, it had I mean, all these knobs and switches and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So basically, that was a clean pedal, but it had all these controls that impacted your guitar, right? Directly. Yeah. Yep. So when you add gain after that, it does really interesting things. So that's what this became basically. I took okay. the I took those ideas and added gain to it, and and the result is you get these nice fuzzy tones. <laughs> So one of the things is uh, it cleans up real well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now I know there's different ways to, to achieve clean up, and you can obviously go the, the treble bead bleed route, and I believe that's what Andy uses, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's awesome. And I used to use that for years too, and I still do in some of my guitars. Um, but so here's, here's, here's where it's kind of interesting. Basically what's going on here is your guitar's hitting uh, straight away before it hits any gain stages it's hitting this tone control and tone cap switch. Mm -hmm. This is a rotary switch with nine positions, and that selects nine different capacitors. So it's like having a tone control. It's the same tone circuit as you would have in your guitar, right. but with nine different caps. But you can do the nine right? different caps. And so if you, you can go right from kind of really muddy, almost kind of like woman-y sounds, right? <laughs> That's okay, go, go nuts, but just so that I, to explain, if you roll that up, the the, the, the woman tone thing goes away, because remember, on, to get yeah. a woman tone, you, you roll that right yeah. back. Yeah, right. So, you, yeah, yeah. So if I leave what, it down... And leave it down and do the rotary switch, because that's yeah, really okay. interesting, because what you're doing there is you're actually altering the resonant peak, the frequency of the resonant peak of your pickups. Through <laughs> different, yeah. <laughs> we talked a lot about that in the past. Yeah. <laughs> So you can get like, yeah, 
a, a sort of uh, when you get to those really nasally sounds, it's kind of like a cocked wire effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's happened is. Uh, you could do that in, in any guitar. Basically, mm -hmm. you have to just use the right tone cap and then turn your tone part down. Sure. And that's what you'll get, yep. right? Yeah. But those cap sizes are not the traditional cap sizes that we find in guitars. Right. Yeah, Typically yeah. in guitars, we use like 0.022s or a 0.047 or a 0.1 or something like that, right? Those are at the end of the range, right? Yeah. The really squawky mid-range focus ones, which really cut through and are kind of aggressive, are more like a 0 0.0047 or a 0 0.01, those kind of things. So you can just play with that and get some different tones there, right? Fantastic. So the, the question that I have now then is, does it do clean or is it all overdrive? I mean, it gets cleanish, but it's not going to be like a prestige. It, it's quite, it's not transparent in no, any, no, no. Just, any sense of I, the word. I think when we first talked about the architect, that ability to change some of that stuff as a as a guitar yeah, modifier, yeah. as it were. But this yes. takes so, that and then just puts it. Uh, but we're specifically in over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Fuzz right. after the end of it. It's All right. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Uh, impedance then. Um, input impedance. Yeah. Can I just mention one other thing before we go there about yeah, yeah, about yeah. that rotary switch? Yeah. Because this is wired to your guitar cable effectively yeah. directly. It's it, uh, what we have now. This control is like having fifties wiring in your guitar. Okay. Uh, there's modern wiring and there's 50s wiring. Mm -hmm. Not to go on too much of a tangent, right? But modern wiring, the tone control is wired to pin one of your volume pot. Yeah. 50s wiring is simply wired to pin two of the volume pot. Mm -hmm. Dan's okay. just changed his Les Paul yeah. to okay. 50s, 50s and it's yeah. radically changed the guitar. So that's 50s wiring, basically. It gives your guitar 50s wiring, okay? If you use this tone control instead of this tone control. Right. Right. Now, it's interesting, to see, we all know this idea that 50s wiring is meant to clean up better than modern wiring. So this allows you to hear that, but also to hear the effect of the different cap size on that cleanup. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? And that's huge, right? So if you have, say, a 0 0.022 cap, very uh, popular, mm -hmm. the cleanup with 50s wiring would be okay. But if you have a much bigger one, like a 0.1, it'll clean up much better. Of course. And so yeah. that's interesting, right? Because then if you want to use... Yeah, if you're looking for better cleanup from your guitar, stick in a bigger cap. Wow. Right? There's oh, downsides to that because if you put in the bigger cap, it means it'll go to mud quicker if you want to use it in the traditional okay. kind of darkening of your tone. Yes. This, this, wow. When we're using fuzz, this guitar cleans up like no other. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, does it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, with fuzz, so but fuzz cleans up already, right? But, so. it, but interestingly, it will have the original value cap in it. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be a fairly Probably, big one. It might be a point one. Point yeah, one. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I have a yeah, listen? Yeah, go for it, yeah. So you let, say more clean up. Let me turn it and you and you play and you'll see the like go to a clean up spot that you yep. wherever you are on the dial there and I'll change this, you know, and if you just play a little. <laughs> Mids are coming back into the sound yes. and murking it up a bit, yeah, no, right? No. So the point one scoops out those mids more, right? But it's more marked the lower down that you are on your volume. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. we're all the way back here, then yeah, that'll be the better cleanup.
clean that. If it's too, it gets too thin and spiky, you just choose a smaller cap, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can change the nature of the cleanup. Amazing. The, the input Z also will have a bearing on that. Basically, the higher that is, the more, uh, the higher resonant peak and the more bass frequency. So if it's too tubby when you clean up or something, you can get it m m more distinction in the sound by running that low. And then you've got a bias, which is typical to a lot of fuzzes, right? right. And you can bias it hot or you can bias it cold. Okay, yeah. I think we need to return to the artisan. Yeah, do it yeah. Like, in yeah, a, yeah, it's just sure. a brief a little, yeah, yeah. In, a, in another show. And that's got a, a tube in it as well, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's a tube overdrive, but with a bunch of stuff done to the front end of it, which yeah. basically makes it take on a fuzz-like Makes character. it fuzzy. Okay, so good. I think there's a show yeah. unfolding here, Dan, for those people who, like overdrive, struggle with distortion, like fuzz, but fuzz is too much. Where, where can you sit in that little <laughs> spectrum yeah. there? I wonder if maybe next time we should go to Simon's. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. you should. That'd be awesome. Yeah. To come Canada. to Canada. Visit I think so. Canada, Canada. So yeah, we you could do Canada. a thing North America bit, maybe West Coast, yeah. and Seattle, and right. up to Vancouver. And we could do it on our... Awesome. Um, we could do Winnipeg in the same trip. They, of course, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and yeah, see our yeah, friends. Sure. They're probably 17,000 miles apart, though, right? They've got planes. <laughs> Fair enough. And, yeah. and Fair routine. Enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know that stuff? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's more a Quebec kind of thing, isn't it? But it is gets it? all it gets all over Canada. We yeah. had some this week, week for the first time. For those of you who don't know, is it? Do you say poutine? Is that the right poutine, way to say it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chips, fries. For those of you in America, Putin on the chips. Yeah, yeah Putin on the chips, as we said. <laughs> Cheese, yeah. and then a, like a gravy. gravy yeah. But the yeah. gravy we had was a peppercorn sauce. Ah, okay. Ooh. And it was peppercorn. Nice. What yeah. did we say? Ambitiously, confidently, confidently seasoned. seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> And it was nice. it was so to, to to Canada. Thank you. Oh, nice. <laughs> I never actually got into the poutine thing. My son likes it, but I should I should uh, experiment and learn what that's all about. Yeah. Okay. Next time we see you, you'll be yeah. like, <laughs> 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 I got into yeah, the poutine. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant, mate. Awesome. Thank you hey. so much for coming to hang out. That My was pleasure. It's awesome great to see fun. you guys again, and yeah, thanks man. for yeah having me out to have a chat about. Well, this just stuff. any chance to hear you do your thing. Ah, you know, please. any excuse no, is brilliant. No. Uh, thank you so much for watching again. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. A massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our dear friends in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some t-shirts and please, hats and please buy swag. Stuff. Please buy stuff. It's the main way we fund this show and we are extremely grateful for you doing so. Indeed. Uh, our patrons on Patreon, thank you so much. Um, our patrons get... The podcast that we do on Mondays, VCQs. I'm going to put this one out as a podcast too because I think uh, the discussion part of it is supremely interesting. Very and will interesting. Be a very nice listen if you're on your daily commute. Yes, lovely. Uh, and what have I forgotten? Nothing. We're there? No, it doesn't matter now, Dan. No, brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Have a great day. Uh, we'll see you on Monday for VCQ. And uh, yeah, take it easy. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>